Right guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video what I'm going to show you how to do is change the bearings in the DT Swiss 3 pull freer body. So just generally give it a service if you've got a freer body like so. It's 11 speed, 3 pull, the end there. So if you've got one of these and you want to know how to service it um, if your bearings are bad without buying a new whole complete freer body then I'll go ahead and show you the steps. Right, so here we have the uh, freer body in question and we're after removing the bearing in the end there obviously like I said it's a three pull hub like so fitted to many of the DT Swiss wheels um, in the lower, lower end of the range um, obviously the higher end wheels tend to use the ratchets on them but they've still got a bearing in the end but this just happens to be the three pull um, one we're doing here so um, obviously you want to remove that bearing because they can seize up or they can go noisy um, and cause all sorts of problems and obviously this one as, it, as an example this one's seized up as in the bearing doesn't turn at all so it's just seized on there because obviously water can get in there because um, all that's on there is there an end cap with some grease on it and that doesn't stop the water getting in if you wash your bike with the hose pipe even or you ride in the wet, it doesn't make any difference, the water will still get in there eventually and um, obviously it, it can uh, doesn't help to uh, shorten the life of the bearing so when you've got the uh, the bearing, I mean the free air body like so what the base is, is in the end here down inside here, as you can see there, the silver piece in there is, is a collar So that collar, if you push on it, it moves from side to side. Like you see a step there. So you push on it and it moves around in there. So what we've got to do is you just move it over to one side. And then what you need is a punch like so. And then sit the punch down in there until it's resting on the lip. And obviously you either use this by a pair of soft jaws in your vice and sit it down in there like so and then put that down inside so it's resting against the lip or if you haven't got a vice to hand get a um, substantial block of wood on the floor and sit it on a block of wood now I, I would use a vice to do it myself but what I'll do is for the video in case you haven't got a vice what I'll do is I'll get a block of wood on the floor and then I'll um, try it with a block of wood so all you do is give it a tap there and then obviously move the collar to, to a different position so you can get on the other side give it a tap there then move it again and give it a tap on the you know just keep tapping around around it evenly don't just hit it on one side um, because the bearing won't come out square the square it'll come out you know you'll, you'll be knocking it out one side only so it won't be coming out straight you need to knock it a bit at a time by moving that collar around in there so you can just get on the edge of the bearing down the bottom so we go ahead and I'll uh, do that. Right, so we've got a block of wood on the floor as you can see. So I'll just place it on there. Find the edge, like I said, by moving the, the collar inside just slightly out of the way. So you can hit on it. So I'll just give it a tap and then move move the collar around. And as it becomes as the bearing starts to move down out, the collar will become loose. So you can move the collar right right out the way so you can see there by tapping it the collar is just floating in there now so you can just move it right out the way and get and get onto the actual bearings itself and just tap it down like I said then move round again tap it round like so and then I'll lift it up and there's the bearing and the collar I was on about and as you can see in there there's all the rusty water in there that gets in there from washing your bike or from riding in the wet doesn't matter it can be both it gets a lot of water in there as you see so that's the um, that's that bearing 
the end bearing there out as you can see there you can see the rust on it as well so it's all gone rusty and they can't physically it's, com it's almost seized up or it has seized completely yeah yeah I can't move it at all so it's just seized up and you can see the the rust coming out of it and the water that's got in there right so now we've got the uh, the bearing out of this end where your uh, f um, cassette lock ring would go and the collar obviously on the inside now as you can see there's a bearing down in there on the, op on the opposite end like so so go ahead and I'll show you how to get that one out to put a new one in right so once you move the remove the bearing from this end obviously what you're looking at doing next is there's a bearing down inside here obviously you don't get to it from this end where the pulls are so obviously you can't see it so what you need to do if you look closely down in there you can see it's held in with a sewer clip so obviously you need to get yourself a pair of uh, sewer clip pliers like so and then putting them down inside there so you get them located onto the actual sewer clip itself and then you can uh, remove it like so so once you've got that removed we're ready for the next step right so once you've removed the uh, sewer clip what you've got to do is then knock that bearing out from in there so obviously you can see a little edge here with the bearing there just enough to get onto so you can go ahead and put it back on the block of wood again and just tap that round evenly a bit at a time and there you've got the, uh, the bearing from the opposite end as you can see this one also doesn't spin freely it's just you can't even turn it right so here we have the uh, component parts of the free hub laid out here I say you've got obviously your end cap you've got the bearing there the spacer collar there the free hub body itself the bearing at the other end with the, the sewer clip so once you've got the free hub body all cleaned up inside you're ready to uh, go ahead and start refitting the bearings right so when we're ready to go and refit ahead and refit the bearings first of all what we want to do is what I do is just put some bit of grease on a paintbrush like so and just paint it round in the bottom there a light coat just where the bearing's going to sit the bottom bearing the one that's going to be held in with the sewer clip it just sits in the bottom there just put a light smear around in there just a light coat so once you've gone ahead and done that obviously you're ready to put your bearing in so again just give it a, a light smear on the, on the outside of it just so you know it's not going to corrode in there or anything and also just helps stop the water getting in because it's only mainly the water that does the damage to them when it gets in when you're washing your bike etc riding in the wet um, that's what ruins the, uh, the bearings eventually if you ride in the dry they last a lot longer and even if you never ever got it wet just the water gets in and the corrosion and the grit it just starts corroding and that's what ruins them so once you've done that you can uh, lower the bearing into place with your finger just getting it down into the bottom there like so and making sure that it's um, gone in straight to start with because if it hasn't 
you don't want to go and hit it in if it's not if it's not in there straight. So make sure this in there straight enough before you uh, attempt to hit the bearing in place. So what you do is you just need a socket like so that fits the outer size of the bearing so you're not hitting directly on the bearings or anything like that you're just hitting on the the outer wall the outer race bit um, and you're not hitting on where the balls are or where the seal is itself so you just want to stand that in there like so so you can just stand that in and just just tap it in obviously making sure that it's going in correctly just keep tapping it just keep tapping it around until it's all the way in once it's all the way in like so like that you're ready to go ahead then and uh, refit the sewer clip onto the uh, refit the sewer clip back in again like you can see so I'll just put a little smear of grease over the face of the bearing like so just where the sewer clip's going to go and then obviously just reverse of removing it get your sewer clip pliers out and then we'll, uh, we'll seat it back in again like so as the sewer clip back in place if you're not sure that it's definitely in just get a screwdriver, a little screwdriver there and just push on the edge of the sewer clip just to make sure it's gone into its seating position so once that stage is done we'll move on to the next step Right, so when we're ready to do the opposite end bearing, obviously the bearing in this end, where your uh, cassette lock ring would go, what you've got to remember is put your spacer in, your collar, down in, sit that in position. So it's just sat in there, like so. And then obviously with the bearing, make sure <clears throat> the way you're going to put the bearing is obviously um, You've cleaned it all out, like I said earlier. Then I'll just put a quick smear of grease where the bearing's going to sit in there, and then we'll just uh, I'll just paint a very light smear over the actual surface itself, just to help it go in and obviously stop it seizing in there any time which you don't want happening I'll just put a coat over the inside there what's going to be the inside of the bearing the face of it over the dust over the sill just to help stop the water because water gets in everywhere so you can go ahead then just drop the bearing in place obviously making sure that, like I said earlier that it's square it's not going in crooked if it's going in crooked then if you start hitting it in then it messes the bearing up so once you've got it sat on there obviously like I said you get the socket just sits over it like so over the outer edge of the actual bearing not not hitting anywhere else then you go ahead and start tapping it into place Until it's all the way in like so 
So there's the outer bearing fitted. Obviously, what you've got to check is make sure after you've done that that the collar inside still moves slightly. So you can just move the collar outside out of the way with a screwdriver or your finger just so the collar's not pinched dead tight because you've got to be able to move that collar like when, when we dismantled it at the beginning the collar moves slightly left to right and around that's how we managed to knock the bearing out to start with so make sure that that still you can still move it side to side with your finger or a screwdriver just make sure it isn't dead tight or anything so once you put the uh, the um, freer body back on the bike obviously and you've greased up your poles and everything like that like you would normally um, now where the when you put the end cap back on make sure again that you get some grease there and put over the seal of the bear in there paint it all over there like so give that a coat and then paint some on the end cap, on the face of the end cap, over here. Paint, put some on there. So as when you put that back on, the end cap on, it's got some grease in between it. So as it helps keep the water out of that end bearing and out of getting in all the, into the actual bearings inside and out. Because it's the, well, like I said earlier, it's the water that does the damage to them. If you was only using them in the bone dry um, and you never washed your bike with a hose pipe or anything, they'd last a lot longer. But you can't not clean your bike, really. Um, and you're always going to get caught out in wet weather at some point, so the bike's always going to need cleaning. So uh, it doesn't do the bearings any good. Same goes for wheel bearings. Right, so there's the uh, cassette and everything put back on, the free up. ready to go for another day right so that's the uh, steps complete for you there I say um, it's very simple to do I'm always make sure you use some quality uh, bearings in in the uh, free air body there don't use uh, any cheap ones um, always go for a good quality ones and then they're definitely last uh, the cheap bearings just tend to wear out almost uh, straight away they're just rubbish so always use uh, decent quality bearings um, and always, uh, like I said, always put some grease around the areas there, just stop it. Any try and stop the water getting in so bad and affecting the bearings. But um, as I say, it's very simple to do. So if you like the video and it helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more cycle-related content. Until next video, ride safe, and I'll see you on that one.